Well, Ian Begg joins me now in the studio, research fellow at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Ian, uh, thanks for joining us. So um, this is a, uh, could be a risky gambit for Boris Johnson because when MPs come back after the summer recess, they're now going to have to decide how to respond. Uh, what are you expecting? Are we going to see a, a no-confidence vote from Jeremy Corbyn, do you think? I don't think we yet know what form the, the parliamentary insurrection, if I can call it that, is going to take. But what we do know is that Parliament has had the gauntlet thrown down to it. It now has to decide to do something, something constructive, rather than just saying what it's opposed to, which it's been doing for the last several months. And it's quite clear that Boris has taken the big risk. He wants this to come to a head. We yet don't know who is going to win in this uh, battle of will between the executive and the legislature. And Johnson's um, uh, supporters are saying, look, this is all part of the Prime Minister's strategy. He is facing down Brussels. He is making it clear that he is prepared to leave, Brussels, leave Europe um, with a no deal if necessary. Does this strategy give him more leverage to reopen negotiations? Well, he's, he's playing two simultaneous games of poker. Poker with the Europeans and saying... I'm going to face you down because I need you to make concessions to enable the deal to happen. But he's also playing poker with the House of Commons by saying, don't block me, don't make it difficult for me to negotiate, don't undermine my negotiating strategy, otherwise you will be the losers. It's in some ways a, a very straightforward matter. What do you define democracy as? Democracy being the House of Commons, which is the representatives, or democracy being the people in the referendum? And those two visions of democracy are, are clashing and have to be resolved. Do you think uh, it, 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 this strategy of, of Johnson's, as far as Brussels is concerned, um, is it working, this sort of, you know, uh, dare me if you, if you dare to leave without a, a deal? It's working up to a point because there's a willingness to look at a formula that could be devised to soften this notion of the Irish backstop. But it's an impossible thing to reconcile because you, you can't find uh, an optimal solution for everybody. Something has to give. The danger is that the cost to the UK of no deal, both in economic and political terms, is far greater than for the other side. We, do, we lose sight of that fact, and so they, they hold the bargaining chips. Uh, we, we've seen a couple of high-profile resignations today. Ruth Davidson, the leader of the Scottish Conservatives, Lord Young, the, the government whip in, in the Lords. What do you make of that and, and how does that impact on Boris Johnson? Well, Ruth Davidson is significant, although she claims it's for personal reasons. You may know she recently gave birth to a, a child and she thinks that the, the cut and thrust of politics is too hard for her to, to do at the same time as being leader and looking after her family. However, it's well known that she's opposed to the strategy that Boris Johnson's adopting. So it's, it's a loss for Johnson. It's also a concern for the integrity of the Conservative Party because the 12 or 13 Scottish seats could be pivotal in any parliamentary arithmetic. And if the Scots Tory MPs say, well, Ruth's gone, we're no longer supporting Boris, he's in trouble. Ian, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank Ian you. Begg there.